everybody and welcome back it's to talk to all of you again today and in episode two of how to get better in world of warships we're actually going to talk about a whole bunch of setup things that are actually important if you actually want to get as much out of the game as humanly possible so this is going to be where i talk about you know everything in the settings to useful modifications that you might want to get uh, some of the modifications that i recommend i'll obviously cover in much more detail in subsequent videos but still the information that they provide can be somewhat useful. So here we go, we're gonna go into the uh, settings menu first and you can get there by pressing escape and clicking settings. Now inside this settings menu, uh, obviously graphics is you know whatever you want into, in order to tweak for maximum performance, audio, I'm not touching any of those. But the third tab controls has actually a few very useful things in it that is actually not keybind related, which you know, for a lot of you, that actually might be what you think it's all about. But there's a whole bunch of options here in the bottom down here that are super, super useful. So the first thing you want to do is actually something called the alternative interface mode. It's a little drop down um, box and it's off by default. I would recommend you turn this to full. So the alternative interface mode, when you go into game, will show you things like shell travel time to target. And those things are like super useful because it'll help you with aiming, but we'll cover that obviously in a separate video. Another thing you want to do is probably display the team lineups and the team lineups. The reason why you want to do that is they'll create sort of two little um, boxes in the top left and top right. And on the left hand side, you can see all the people on your team, including alive and dead. And on the right hand side, you'll see the same thing. So this allows you at a quick glance to see how many ships on your team are still alive and how many ships on the opponent team is still alive and that can help you make certain decisions. Another thing that you probably want to do is enable the show both main battery and torpedo tube load indicators. This will show you small bars down at the bottom that individually show you the reload status of each individual turret and each individual torpedo launcher, which is a lot more useful than the uh, single icon in the bottom that shows you an overall load timer for everything. Then there is the show smoke screen boundaries and the show smoke screen timer. Both of these are super useful because the show smoke screen boundaries will show you a circle in your game that shows you how much the smoke screen is actually covering. So if you want to, you know, hide in smoke or whatever, or you want to go into smoke, it's good to know how big that smoke circle is. Because if you don't and you drift out of it, you'll get spotted and probably get killed. The show smoke screen timer, of course, will tell you how much longer the smoke will still be there, including this is for yourself and, of course, your allied smokes as well. And this can be super useful because, hey, if you know that your smoke is only going to be around for five seconds longer, you might want to not sit still in it. Furthermore, um, there's two other things that could also be kind of useful is the counters. So the counter for damage upon your spotting and the counter for potential damage. These things are just nice numbers for you to have um, if you really want to see how much spotting you're doing for your team or just maybe how much damage is being directed at you overall. So these are just nice little numbers to have. So from here on, um, there's one other thing which is crosshair related, but I'll come back to that in a little bit. Overall, this is pretty much what you need to do. And of course, one other thing is uh, the collision avoidance system. You might want to turn that off because it's a little wonky. But you know, if you have it on, you know, hey, so be it, right? All right, so you've made it into the actual battle area. There's a couple more things to pay attention to. So first things first, whoops, sorry about that camera tilt. There is the alternative interface mode that you set to full, remember? And so that gives you a couple of pieces of information. Remember that shell travel time? So when you zoom in, you'll notice that there is now a number that moves in seconds to the left of your aim point. And you'll notice that there is, you know, shell flight time to seconds and it moves as I'm increasing in range. And then of course there is the, you know, where exactly a distance I'm aiming at. So that's a useful bit of information to have because it'll affect the way you aim. And I'll get to that in a separate aiming video, but for now, just know that that information is there. Other major thing to talk about is of course the mini map. When you start playing this game, your mini map is tiny. And it's one of those things that you might not notice is really there. You might not pay attention to it. It has so many critical pieces of information that you absolutely need to look at it. So the first thing you should do is increase the size of that mini map. So press the plus key on your keyboard and you can make it bigger. Of course, you can go, you know, maximum size, but I tend to like sort of one size below the maximum. At this kind of size for your mini map, you're going to be able to see things a lot more clearly. And this mini map is where you're going to get a lot of your situational awareness from. So make it bigger, look at it often, 
and of course we'll talk about intricacies and all that about exactly what to do in a different video but for now the setup make it bigger so the minimap itself also has some additional settings that you should probably enable so how you get there is hold down the control key bring up the mouse pointer go to the top right of the minimap and there's a little gear icon there click it and now you have a couple more circles that you can possibly enable the one I would recommend, aside from the surface detectability range one, is probably if you have a hydroacoustic or uh, radar um, range circle, you enable those because that'll allow you to, from the minimap, occasionally gather useful information as to possibly where enemy ships might be, um, especially hidden enemy destroyers based on their last known location. And if they're within your circle and you feel like you have a grasp on it, you might be able to pop it for information. Um, other things that you can adjust is the transparency of said circles. You can make these a little bit less uh, transparent, a little bit more transparent, whatever you want. And then of course, there's also the water transparency. You can turn that down so you can make the minimap mostly clear. I like to see the water, weirdly enough, just the blue on the minimap, but hey, that's another one of those decisions that you can, um, you know, you can make. And finally, there are things like the range numerical values, the ship names, these things you can enable so that let's say you do see a last known ship position, having a ship name along with it will give you an indication as to what ship that is. Although occasionally it can get a little cluttered, but it is still useful information nonetheless. And so that is everything from the in-game vanilla settings that you can adjust for information. Now let's take a look at modifications and how those can help you out as well. Alrighty, so this is the official World of Warships mod station. This is the Wargaming sanctioned mod manager. All the mods in here are ones that they've approved for their game. And um, this is a mod manager that I like because it is updated at the exact same time as I think the patches are, so they're always up to date. And the first thing I would recommend you get is inside the uh, first option, there's a dynamic crosshair. I would recommend you get Nomogram Classic Crosshair. This is a super useful crosshair, um, in my opinion, and it has sort of a direct tie-in to that shelf flight time thing from the full alternative interface battle mode. And that is a thing that we're gonna cover in the very next video when I talk about aiming. So for now, this is something I would recommend you get. Um, of course, if you're currently using like static or dynamic and you think you are good with it, and I'll, again, I'll address that all tomorrow, um, go for it. But yeah, this is something that I think if you were to know how to use it correctly would drastically improve your abilities to hit stuff. So definitely Nomogram first. The next thing you want to go to is actually over here, which is the modification of the combat interface. All the stuff in the middle, like, you know, the, the interface design, you know, things like the ship icons or the shells, or whatever, those are not super important. Go to the modifications of the combat interface, and there's a couple of really useful things in here. So one of the super useful things is this little thing. It's called the detection timer after main uh, gun shot. So when you fire your guns, this is a little timer that'll tell you, um, you know, sort of how long you're going to be detected because of your gun plume. So once, you know, let's say assuming that there's no other ships within your surface detectability, hey, you fire, you've got this little useful timer, it hits zero, and you're going to fall off detect again. Kind of a useful piece of information to have. There is a mod called running light. I personally don't use this because I feel like this is almost borderline cheat, but there are people who use this. This shows you sort of very useful information as to sort of enemy ships movement and, you know, whether they're going forward or backwards, you know, this thing gives you sort of instantaneous information. Personally, I consider it almost borderline of a, of a cheat and I really don't want to use that. It kind of ruins it for me, but hey, if it's something that's useful for you, go for it. Another useful thing, score timer. So the score timer will give you a countdown in, let's say, minutes and seconds until your team loses based on enemy capture points. Again, it's a useful bit of information because sometimes in certain scenarios, you know, let's say you're maybe you've got a whole stack of points. Enemies got like, let's say, a cap, but you've lost more ships and, you know, there's time is starting to run out and you're not really sure. Hey, do you have to go defend a cap or can you just kind of run away? Maybe that'll secure the win. This little bit of timer might help you make that decision. Another thing, regen assistant. This is a really useful thing if you wanna maximize each and every heal that you have. Because in the normal game without this, you don't really know how much you're healing. You, you kind of have indication with that little um, gray area with your ship icons, but other than that, there's no exact numbers. 
get the regen assistant, it'll give you an exact number so you can maximize each heal to the maximum. There's another couple of useful things. Uh, one of them is the damage meter. This is just showing you how much damage you've caused to opposing team ships and how much damage you're receiving. Mostly I find the damage received thing to be useful because when I take damage, it's nice to know where that damage might be coming from. Um, other sort of useful things, this is a small thing. It's the ship info panel and it's a small little bit. It's the info panel for the enemy. So when you lock onto an enemy ship, there's gonna be a little bit of information that comes out next to your minimap. And it'll show you the enemy ship's detectability, the you know the speed of that ship, and of course those can be modified by things like flags and stuff. But at least it'll show you the stock information. So especially when you combine it with again that reticle shelf flight time to uh, in seconds kind of thing, it can be a useful thing for helping you aim. And finally, there is something called navigator. And navigator, there's two. Uh, one of them is the navigator bay. The other one's the navigator mini. This particular thing gives you a very interesting piece of information and. Again, I will explain the usage of this in much more detail in a subsequent video, but it shows you what angle the enemy ship is to yourself. So that will tell you if when you fire, you might bounce your shells or when you are actually going to get penetrations. So these, I think, are essential modifications. Everything else, you know, you can look through them. If something interests you, go for it. But generally, those are the things that I would go for. I personally am still running a couple more sort of graphical things like the old water splashes, the old gunshot, muzzle flash, removing the fog and the glare, but that's not essential. And of course, you also might want to enable your replays because, hey, if you've got replay files, it allows you to analyze your battles afterwards. But these are all extra things. The fundamental ones are the ones in the crosshairs and the one inside the... Um, I guess this is the battle uh, interface changes. Those are the two that are absolutely essential. All right, one final thing for this particular video, and that is changing that crosshair thing that I was talking about earlier. So what you want to do is, again, press Escape, go into your settings, go into your controls, and go to select crosshair. Now, in your dynamic crosshair, there's a drop-down menu. So normally, you have the type 1 selected by default. But if you want to use the ones from the mod station, make sure to click the drop down and select something like Nomogram Classic. Again, I will cover the exact usage of this in another video, so hang on uh, for that one. But if you want to just change it right now, go for it. In terms of how to use it exactly, I'll cover it a little bit later. Anyways, other than that, uh, folks, take care of yourselves, have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.